Ahoy! He's Straw, I'm Parker, and together we are the Battle Hammer. Do do do! Um, so, this time we have another episode of Parker Paints. Um, I will be painting uh, this guy here. He's a Nurgle kit bash sent to me by the lovely Kieran from the Odd Sided Dice podcast. Uh, he loves to kit bash models. Um, how cool is that? He sent one to Straw, which was a Space Wolf, and this guy is a Nurgly Death Guard dude. Um, I think I can recognise some pieces, like I think it's based on a Death Guard model with those spikes, I think, are from the Mutalith or whatever it's called, the Warp Beast. I could be wrong, it might be a Tyranid thing actually, it might be a Nid thing. I've um, done a big old base, which I'm normally not a fan of, but I love the idea that he's, you know, he is a hero, so obviously he has to stand on his massive base. Uh, the That looks like an orc arm with a chopper, um, and on the back he's got like, I don't know if that's from a heavy flamer or something like that, but very cool. I added a little tube, because you've got to have a tube when you've got a big base with goop coming out. Uh, so massive shout out to Kieran for doing that, and also he's got um, that tube coming out of his uh, face hole going into his backpack. Um, there is actually a little, it's a wire with another wire wrapped around it that Kieran's got on the Odd Sided Dice podcast YouTube channel, which I'll put a link to in the comments down below, uh, in the um, doobly-doo. And he also sent me a little sticker that I've put on my wet palette. Yay. Um, so I thought, got to obviously paint that model that's gone straight to the top of my queue. Um, what could be better than doing some rust effect slash verdigree effect on some Nurgle model? Uh, so I'm probably just going to do the armor and some other bits, and then I'll I'll crack on with the um, with the rust and stuff like that. Uh, probably use some pigments. Might use some. Um, secret weapon rust paint that I picked up um, so yeah should be fun looking forward to mushing it up uh, so on to the next bit right so here we have um, Kieran's mini on the table itself on my little lucky desk uh, behind me or behind him rather you can see that I've got some paints laid out um, I am a big fan of the Death Guard Horus Heresy colour scheme rather than the modern just paint them green because green's unpleasant, right? I like that kind of old school uh, Horus Heresy vibe, so I'm going to be painting his armour like that. I'll be working my way through um, Zandru Dust, Ushabti Bone, Screaming Skull, probably going to do some shading with a bit of Sarah from Sepia, G Dub paint. Um, now I know that I'm going to use some this big old chopper he's got. That'll be like a dark steel with loads of rust and crap like that. So that's what I'll be doing the rust effects on. Um, the base will be kind of fairly simple, just like a, a dark grey, um, probably some some browns in there just to kind of um, you know ease up on the monotony, as it were. Um, I'll try and do something a bit funky with the tubes, but I don't know what yet. Um, this backpack at the moment, I'm thinking, is going to be. Uh, can you see that? The backpack, I think, at the moment, is going to be a like a bronze colour, so I can do a bit of a verdigris effect on that. Um, the fleshy parts, as well as his arm flesh, are going to be like bruised and pale and pasty looking. And I think I'm going to try and blend that into like a dark. Um, a dark, a really really dark purple going on black for the spiky bits and then paint them in a gloss so they so they pop a little bit. Um, but we'll see, this is going to be a bit of a experimentation as I go and then we'll see if certain colours do or don't work. Um, I'm going to try and focus on the um, any rust and verdigris effects that I'll be doing. Uh, so I'm just going to start painting. Um, we'll go in with some. I'm using the the Zandri dust at the moment. I'm just going to go across his armour. 
I'm going to try and make this more kind of grim darky, I guess. I I've got quite a kind of like that dark painting style, which you may have noticed from my um, what they called the hidden ones last week. Um, so kind of a grim dark vibe kind of suits me. Um, painting wise, I'm quite happy to give that a go. But I thought in honour of um, Kieran and you know this being a kit bash, um, if you want to go and check out the Odd Sided Dice podcast YouTube channel, they're doing a lot of um, bashes and, and kit bashy type things on there at the moment. Uh, they're doing, I think he's doing Inquisitor Warband based on, I forget the name of the book, but it's a uh, Blanchitsu style, lots of John Blanche vibes going on um, on there at the moment. So he's taking elements out of this John Blanche book and um, so like there's a Sister Repentia in there, there's a, I think he's called a black black monk or, or something like that, I don't know, I can't remember, it was a black something, not a black monk, maybe a black priest or something like that. Um, and he's kind of recreating those with, with kit bashes, which is really cool, so um, I will put links to their YouTube channel in there, but like I say, because they're doing, or rather Kieran's doing the... Um, Inquisitor 28 kit bash kind of vibe. I'm going to try and do a grim dark vibe. Um, I don't have any oil paints, so I don't know how well it's going to come out. I know that a lot of the um, grim dark guys use oil paints and stuff. Um, that is something I'd like to get into in the future, maybe. I really like the uh, not the simplicity, but the um, you know, the way that you can take, you, know, you can paint your base colours in and then just throw on some oil washes and then just kind of mank it up a bit. I might have to change the uh, angle of the camera, we'll see. Um, because of the, the large base, um, I'm going to have to raise the miniature up a little bit higher than I normally would. So yeah, you're, you're missing out on some of this. Let's do that now, live and direct. Let's see if this works at all. Put the paints back so you can still see them. Is that better? See, this is it. This is the stuff you tune in for. There we go, that's better. I'm just going to crack on with this for a little while. I'll see you in the fast 40 bits. Enjoy. Ivory kind of colour done. Um, I did at the end add a little bit of pale sand and even a little bit of off white just for some very, you know, poppy highlights. Um, looking alright so far, but still looks a little bit bland. So I'm going to add some black green um, and I'm going to add some Death Guard green because I thought, well, seeing this is a Death Guard, even if I'm not doing a Death Guard thing, I should still use Death Guard green. Um, so I'm just black green from Vallejo on the kind of shoulder pad areas anywhere that I think I want him to have 
that kind of green part on the shoulder pads. Being careful obviously not to hit any of the stuff we've already painted. He says immediately making a mess. I'm using black green because it's kind of, it's not desaturated as such. But it's not super strong green. Um, and the Death Guard green will give it a, you know, still that green vibe. It will be a smidge desaturated. Funnily enough, I do play well. I've always had a soft spot for Nurgle. I think this is the first time I've ever painted a Death Guard model. So this should be a lot of fun. Now I am just whizzing through um, I'm just going to whiz through these bits because the you know the purpose of the video is not really about the um, the armor. If I end up getting any Death Guard for 40k in the future, I do have half of the Dark Imperium set from a while back, all assembled but not glued. Do have a bunch of plague bearers. Are uh, kind of on their way to being painted ish. Um, I don't want to make some notes of what I'm painting because there is a tiny chance I may well end up doing these more. But we'll see. So, on with the oblig obligatory fast forward. Do a huge amount of green um, just on this shoulder pad here, um, a little bit on his neck and on his little symbol of Nurgle. Um, I think if it was a different Death Guard model, I might do more green, but in this case, I don't need to do a huge amount. <coughs> Next, I'm going to work on the skin because I want to kind of get those underneathy parts done before I start on the metal. Metal! I'm going to be working from Bugman's Glow through Dead Flesh up to Birch from Citadel, uh, Vallejo and Scale Colour, respectively. Uh, I'm just going to paint in the arm flesh and the bulbousness on his back. I'm probably going to add some more mottled colours to it as well later on, but for now I'm just going to block in um, some of the flesh areas. Right, this is just a little um, note that I finished the skinny, you know, fleshy areas. Um, I didn't use the recipe that I'd previously said because I'm making this kind of up as I go along. Um, the previous recipe was very much um, uh, a bit too similar to the armour, uh, so it didn't stand out enough. So I changed my recipe up, did a base of Bugman, Bugman's Glow, uh, added some. What is this? Miskatonic Grey from Scale Colors Fancy Range. 
uh, on top of that I added some pale grey blue from Vallejo um, to get this kind of um, you know skin with a with a bluish tinge um, and then I shaded that with some Dricky Violet and then added in a little petroleum grey um, which I think looks kind of nice looks kind of you know fleshy and sore and you know painful uh, which is kind of what I'm going for. It's a nice contrast, nice colour contrast against the um, kind of yellow bone vibe of the armour. Um, so next I will be doing the metal and I'm going to start with the kind of brass bronze vibe. Um, So I've got um, scale 75 metallics, we've got some decayed metal, some necro gold and some peridot alchemy which I'm going to work my way up and once I've done that I'm going to add some, I've got nylock oxide here and I've also got verdigris glaze. I think most people, and you know, that, there's nothing wrong with that, most people when they do the, um, how do I say, the verdigris, like when, you, when you're doing a rust effect you don't just add orange you add like a deep brown and the more kind of different colours you get in um, the more interesting your your uh, your look can be and it's kind of the same sort of thing with verdigris you don't just want to add um, you know nylac oxide and that's it or just a you know a light blue teal kind of colour because otherwise you're going to kind of miss out um, I am using a dry palette, I've got a little plastic dry palette here, I'm using instead of my wet palette because um, metallics can sometimes, not all the time, but they can sometimes not act particularly well on a wet palette because the wet palette can draw the moisture out and it, it changes how it acts and stuff. And for this uh, I'm going to be going straight over with my decayed metal and I'm going to do this little um, fly icon on his chest. We'll do the knee here as well, this kind of face on his knee, uh, this face on this shoulder pad, and I think I'm going to do this backpack as well. And then I'm going to focus the metal when I when I get around to doing that on this little chainmail, uh, the pipes and the big blade as well. So I've just added a smidge of water to my decayed metal and I've got a Number six bold mirror, which is just a cheap um, synthetic brush. Because metallics can affect your your nice brushes badly. I do have a nice brush that I do use for metallics. Um, but I don't need it at this stage. So I'm just going to go in. And probably do two coats, I think. And block in all this decayed metal where I want it to be. This is just an example for a metallic. You can use any kind of metallic paints you like. You know. I've been converted over to the scale colour ones quite recently. Um, I also really like the, um, what are they, Vallejo metal colour, which I really like and I'll be doing those for the steel kind of colour. They don't have a, they've got loads of different steel colours and kind of burnt iron and aluminium and chrome and all that kind of stuff. But they don't have a great selection when it comes to the your other metallic colours. You know, you've got your golds and your coppers and your bronzes and all that. Um, a lot of people really like the scale colour paints. So I thought I'd try them out and I've been really enjoying them so far. And there is a lot of trim on here. And 
I was thinking, do I do all the trimming in gold? Or brass or whatever you want to call it. And I thought, no, because I just didn't really want to. Um, going with that Horace Heresy style, I didn't want them to be too uh, ornate. I just didn't fancy painting all the trim, to be quite honest. So I'm going to crack on with this for a bit. So I've done two coats of decayed metal to give it a, a you know a reasonable um, opaque colour, and now I'm going to go in with some decayed gold. No, necro gold. Sorry. So I've done the you know bronzy goldy type stuff. Um, looking all right. So now I've got some verdigris glaze and nylac oxide. Uh, verdigris glaze. I've got a concentrated version and a watered down version. Nylac oxide is pretty watered down on its own anyway. Um, so I'm just going to little do some little dibby dabs. Um, I'm going to try and go for like crevices and you know anywhere water might collect. I'm going to start with, you can just about see that, that's the nylac, oh, that's the nylac oxide, that's the verdigris glaze and that's the verdigris glaze watered down. Um, verdigris glaze is a little bit brighter than the nylac oxide so I want to go in with the nylac oxide first. Just gonna a little, you know, dab it into any kind of crevices. Cool thing is, it's quite highly pigmented, so if you just do a little dab, it will collect. And look really bright. If you kind of thin it out a little bit, will uh, just kind of mat the area down a bit. Um, I don't want to go massively too overboard with this. Um, although do bear in mind you can go in afterwards. Um, and reapply any metallics that you want to do, which I may well do. I might, I may well go into with just a smidge of the peridot alchemy, uh, just to refine any highlights. You don't want to go crazy, but you do want to, I mean, it's supposed to look, you know, what's the word? You're supposed to look uh, decayed. 
so you don't want a certain amount on there. We can of course um, go in, because it's quite wet, you can apply some where you want it and then if you think you've gone a bit overboard rinse your brush and then wipe some away and just repeat that as much as you as you kind of want to really you can use it to um, almost like a wash to kind of really emphasize those crevices and whatnot. It can look a bit weird once you first put it on. But often it um, it does uh, what's the word? Not mat down. It, like any paint, you know, it looks different once it's dried to once it's uh, once it's wet. If you apply something, you think, oh man, that looks bonkers. It will dry less um, aggressive. You can dibby dab it into wherever you like, really. I'm just going to do this. I'll let you know when it's done. To go with the um, nylac oxide, now I'm going to go in with a watered down um, verdigris glaze from uh, Vallejo. And this is a bit brighter, it's just going to be a similar kind of thing, just add another level. Another layer, if you like, of of um, verdigris, kind of where you know, just certain little points so where it might be a little fresher. And again, we can add some, and then use a wet brush to dab it around. pleased with how it's come out. I might now um, go in with a couple of uh, re like highlight reinforcements with that Peridot Alchemy just to really make any last little details pop. But I think I'm going to wait until I've finished the model before I do that. You know, getting a, a vague idea. Sometimes you, you know, it's hard to say, hey, I finished this particular part of a model. Um, and then you don't necessarily know what it looks like. Um, with everything else together. So I think I'm going to wait until I finish then I'll, I'll worry about the highlights afterwards. Um, so now uh, I'm going to crack on with the steel parts, specifically the big chopper. See you in a bit. Okay, so I've done the uh, bronze with the verdigris effect so now I'm going to start with some you know steel um, kind of irony metal uh -huh with the blade and various other little bits. I'm going to start using these um, Vallejo metal colour paints, starting with burnt iron, working up to steel, then working up to silver, and then I'm going to add the rust effects on after that. Um, again I'm using a dry palette rather than a wet palette, because um, these can have a tendency to separate on a wet palette. I'm just going to go in with this burnt iron to begin with. It's a nice dark 
kind of metal colour with a little bit of brown in there as well. I'll probably go two coats just to get a nice solid colour. And again, I'm making sure that I'm using a brush that I only use for metallics. Again, I'm using my um, trusty cheap ass synthetic brush. I will be adding various textures and stuff to this by using um, well, a selection of different things including pigments and um, typhus corrosion and that kind of thing. Um, but I want to do that after I've painted the metal. I can always add in more metal afterwards. I want to, um, you know, obviously your mileage may vary, this is just how I'm going to do it. And don't be afraid to experiment, this is, while I am doing rust effects and stuff, particularly for this video, um, I'm not a scale modeler, I'm not an expert, you know, if you want to get really good at stuff, yes, you can do a bunch of research. You know, you can take pictures of rusty old tractors from the internet. You could probably do some actual scientific research to find out how rust affects various different, you know, um, uh, various different metals, depending on their composition. But we're just kind of going for, you know, this is a wargaming miniature, this isn't a scale model. I'm just going for something that looks cool. But you do you, you know? You are the master of your own minis. If you want to do something that's like a really bright orange, you can go for that. You know, whether that's something. I mean, these guys, you know, they're 10,000 years old. They probably wouldn't have a lot of new rust on them. But that would look less cool. Right? And you know, the warp, I don't know how that's affected them. So maybe they're in a constant state of renewing that rust, thanks to the, you know, the tainted decay of Grandfather Nurgle. And you can go as light or as heavy with any of these weathering techniques with the verdigris. You can just like do a tiny little bit if you want to just a tiny bit. Or if you want to make it look crazy, you can do that as well. You know, don't let anyone tell you that your fun is wrong. It's your army, they're your dudes. Make them how you want. Maybe you don't want to do so there's a, yeah, random subject change. There is an army I have for a game I haven't played yet. And they've got a lot of bronze in them. And I've been looking up bronze recipes online, even though I know I'm never probably going to paint them in the next year. I've seen ones that are, because they're supposed to be robots, they wouldn't be allowed to go all decayed and have verdigris on them. However, it looks cool. So maybe I will put verdigris on them, you know? I don't know yet. Maybe they've been out in the field doing some, you know, fighting.
But like I say, I'm just going to do the metal bits for now. So I'll see you in a bit. Okie so um, as you can see I've done a little bit more uh, work on him uh, just to get some of the colours down so I have um, worked on his base and his spiky claws um, on the end of his uh, tentacly goodness and some oils and whatnot um, so now I'm going to start doing the rust effects um, I'm going to go in to begin with with some typhus corrosion Oops, which I will throw across the room uh, You know, typhus corrosion, everyone knows about it. It's one of those cool things. Um, it's brown, it's sticky, it's got bits in it. We all love a bit of typhus corrosion. Uh, straight out of the pot. I'm just going to kind of dab it on, smooth it about. You can do as much or as little as you want. It's got a bit of texture in there. Um, I've still got the um, metallic underneath. So you're still going to get a certain amount of sheen to it. Uh, this brush is kind of getting on a bit now. Um, don't use your fancy, fancy pants brushes yet on this because it will ma ma ming them up a bit um, because you're, uh, you know, you dab the way you're dabbing and everything, and you got your bits in it and all that kind of crap. Not to be super, super neat. Just smooth it about a bit. You get a nice muddy kind of thing going on. If you go over a bit, it doesn't matter. You know, I mean, it's Nurgle, it's rusty, it's supposed to be. I'm keeping him relatively clean at the moment, um, but I'll probably finish him off with a bit of a bit of minginess. I can go over the base of this as well a little bit, just to give it a bit of interest. Uh, for the base, I just did um, German Grey from Vallejo with a bit of um, Fimrisian Grey, dry brushed over. And then a little wash of null oil. Nothing super fancy. We go. I've left the the blade area of the knife, you know, because I want that to look sharp and pointy. And but pretty much everywhere else I've cut, co not covered, but um, I really like working over mat. Uh, sorry, working over metallics with things. Um, because then you get the sheen of it underneath um, but a lot of people will just paint the rust and then maybe dry brush a bit of metal over the top which is equally valid um, now I'm going to be digging out my secret weapon <laughs> as it were um, I've got brown rust, I've got red rust and I've got orange rust You can use any kind of dark red brown, lighter red brown, and kind of orange. I do have riser rust at the end as well. Um, I like the. I just picked them up because I thought, oh, they look cool. I think I saw them at a convention and was like, yeah, I'll give those a bash. 
because um, I wanted to do some cool rusty stuff and I really like them. Um, very matte, um, you know, rather than sometimes you want to, you know, dig out an old paint that you use and you don't have to want to have to buy new paints for everything, you know. Um, so maybe you do just want to use like scrag brown or whatever if you've got it. But sometimes it is nice to get a thing that is designed to do the thing that it's designed to do. Um, if you see what I mean. Um, make sure so Rise of Rust is a it's a technical paint or a dry paint or whatever they call it. Um, so it's kind of smushy. I guess it's a dry brushing or whatever, but I think it works much better. You put it on your palette and water it down until it's really thin, kind of like a wash almost. Because um, kind of similarly to the uh, what's the word to the verdigris ones. When you water it down, it kind of goes in all the nooks and crevices and kind of goes on a little bit patchy, which is kind of what you want for rust. Okay, so we'll start with a little bit of. I tend to start dark and work your way up to the lighter ones. So we'll start with a little bit of the. Um, what's that called? Brown rust. We're just working our way, making sure we're getting in all the nooks and crannies, because that's where you want to be. Again, you're stippling, so it's going to negatively affect your brush. Like I say, this one's on its last legs as such, but got some more coming, hopefully. Thanks to the unique way the um, Battle Hammers funded, um, quick Patreon plug. If you want to support us, you can. We've got a Patreon link in the comment in the doobly doo, even. Um, and because of those guys, I'm going to get some new brushes, which is super nice. Be more Rosemary Co. I think I've got a couple more Rosemary Co. size ones coming um, because I like them. I'm just going to go in with this a little bit and just, you know, to be super accurate, like I, like I said earlier on, we're not going for a scale model finish, although you, you know, if you want to, you can do all the research on how rust works and stuff like that, but really we're just kind of going in with a, you know, whatever looks cool, right? These are toy soldiers, they're not scale models but if you want to do that that's totally cool and now we're going in with some red rust and again I've watered this down quite a bit we're just smooching it on After that we'll work our way up so I'll do this in a bit of slow-mo and you can see how it looks at the end. So now that's dried and I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, you know, I think with rust you really do want to make sure that you're using more than one colour. You know, riser rust is great, but don't use just riser rust. Um, unless you're going for that kind of look, um, one bright colour can look really good in a, a more kind of cartoony vibe, or if you want something really vibrant. Um, but I think, you know, obviously real rust has many different colours, um, mostly brownie-ready kind of colours, because that's what iron oxide is. Um, so I think the more 
variation you have the better it looks in my humble opinion um, so you can see here I now have some Vallejo pigments this is the rust and corrosion set um, if you're going to use pigments which you don't have to do I'm just kind of more trying these out really um, make sure you've got some old brushes it will ruin your brushes they will be unusable almost for anything else apart from maybe putting glue on or something like that so do make sure you've got some old crappy brushes you don't mind um, mashing up a little bit uh, now there's kind of two ways you can do it you can just get a, get a wee bit on a brush like so and then just kind of smoosh it in and around the area you want it to be gives a wicked kind of matte dusty vibe this is brown iron oxide which is the darker color they do um, do bear in mind that you know you are just basically applying pigment to the model without any kind of fixative you can buy fixatives if you want to but they will change how it looks so if you're going to do like an army kind of thing um, and they're going to be played with a lot maybe you want to use a fixative so they don't just get dust all over your tables um, but they're usually pretty good once you mash them in a bit you know they won't trail dust everywhere or anything like that Be applying loads and loads, just a wee bit, you know, to get a bit more variation. And the other issue you may have is, um, you know, targeting specific areas might get tricky because you are, um, you're not painting with them as such. Kind of just jabbing them in and around so they can go everywhere a bit but on the other hand shouldn't matter too much um, because they will of course like any paint I mean although they're not paint you know there is a certain amount of translucent translucency there we go words um, So they will kind of highlight any colour that's underneath them. If you put them over a grey, they're going to look different to if you put them over a brown, so more rust. So if you you know, go over the edge a little bit, it shouldn't make a huge amount of difference. Um, so that was the brown iron oxide. I'm not going to go crazy with these. Um, and then we'll use a bit of this old rust. You know, similar sort of thing, just blow away any excess. Don't make sure you don't drop this because they will go everywhere and they will stain everything because they are raw pigments. They are the they are the thing that makes your color paint a certain colour. You can go crazy with this sort of stuff as well if you really want to. Nothing wrong with that. Obviously, it's as much or as little as you personally want on your model. Um, but something I saw, oops, I won't use this wet brush again um, because it will act differently. Uh, one thing I saw on a, another YouTube channel, Eons of Battle. Um, I think they're called um, and he was doing a rust bases and he was putting down some glue in targeted spots and then adding the rust to that 
So I'm going to try that. But with uh, a little dab of mm, matte varnish. So just happens to be Vallejo Mecca matte varnish because that's what I've got. Um, so I'm just going to put a little dab, a few little dabs in and around. Because then that will effectively create a glue for the um, for the pigments to stick to. Sticking them to it will actually create a bit more texture because texture is good when it comes to rust. Good. So here we go, lots of variation, lots of texture. Um, I think that's about done with the rust. I want to, I could go lighter with the new rust, but I think I'm good leaving it there. Um, so that's it really, that is how I would paint rust and or oops. Got a bit on there. Rust and or um, corrosion, i.e. the verdigris effect as well. Um, so on with the spinny thing. So there we have it. Uh, here is my finished death guard with lots of nice rust and um, verdigree effect going on. Um, I hope you enjoyed that video. Uh, it was a lot of fun to paint. Massive shout out, huge thanks to Kieran from Odd Sided Dice to, for kit bashing at me and sending it to me. Really, really appreciate it. Very decent of you. Um, if you want to support the channel, there are various different ways you can do that. We've got a uh, Patreon account, which I'll put in the doobly doo below. Um, we've got affiliate links and stuff like that as well, so um, anything that you want to do, we would greatly appreciate it. But if you do nothing else, there is one thing that you definitely must do. Make sure, or don't forget to, like and subscribe if you liked it and want to subscribe. If you don't like it and don't want to subscribe, you don't have to like and subscribe, but we would like it if you liked and subscribed. And until next time, stay hammered!